Old photos hold the essence of history. They act as a gateway to the past. Through these images, we can witness events and moments that would otherwise be unimaginable. In this video, I present a peek into some of the most precious photographs that hold immense significance for scientists and historians. Enjoy the viewing experience. The Codex Gigas is a colossal handcrafted manuscript believed to have been created by a single individual in the 12th century. This extraordinary book weighs a staggering 75 kilograms and measures 89 by 49 centimeters. Within its pages are 310 parchment sheets, each meticulously inscribed with two columns containing 106 lines of text. It is generally believed that the creation of the Codex Gigas took approximately 20 to 30 years. However, the manuscript is accompanied by a captivating and somewhat mystical legend that claims it was written in a single night. According to this legend, a Benedictine monk committed a grave sin and sought repentance in the presence of senior monks. The senior monks, firm in their stance, declared that he would be walled up within the monastery as punishment. Desperate, the sinner implored for one night to compose a monumental work that would glorify their monastery for generations to come. Intrigued by the proposition, the senior monks granted him this request. The monk, aware that he could not fulfill this colossal undertaking on his own, resorted to an unholy alliance by praying to the devil for assistance. Shockingly, the devil answered his plea and even left his image on a separate sheet at the end of the book akin to an autograph, to signify his involvement in the book's creation. This enigmatic book still holds the image of the devil as a testament to its mysterious origins. This photograph captures an unusual contraption, and without the image as proof, many would find it hard to believe such an invention existed in today's world. In the modern age, we are bombarded with a constant barrage of noise and an array of gadgets that often divert our attention from our tasks. In an era where we have access to vast amounts of information, a never-ending stream of news, photographs, videos, and music, maintaining focus can be a challenging endeavor. This deluge of stimuli can distract us from spending quality time with friends and loved ones, hinder our daily tasks, and even disrupt our sleep. Mobile app developers have attempted to address this issue by creating various time management programs, but their effectiveness is not always guaranteed. Interestingly, a similar problem was already recognized in the 1920s, and people sought solace and concentration. Inventor and writer Hugo Gernsback devised a unique solution, the isolator. This peculiar device was essentially a large wooden helmet lined with felt. It featured two glass pieces for the eyes and a partition near the mouth that absorbed sound to ensure the person using it didn't suffocate. Oxygen was supplied through a tube from a tank. It's safe to say that this device could be considered one of the most whimsical inventions of the 20th century. Harriet Cowell made a substantial contribution to the advancement of medicine. This individual, employed as a janitor at Hahnemann Medical College in San Francisco, passed away from tuberculosis at the age of 35 in 1888. She left her body for scientific study. Following this, Professor Rufus Weaver, an anatomy instructor, embarked on a lengthy project. He meticulously separated the nervous system from her body. This painstaking effort enabled him to create a model of the human nervous system, which he displayed on a stand. Initially intended for Weaver's students' education, his work garnered significant attention from fellow medical professors. Eventually, the nervous system model was showcased at the World's Columbian Exposition in 1893, where Weaver received a medal and was honored with the prestigious Blue Ribbon Scientific Award. Images of the nervous system began appearing in textbooks, laboratories, and universities, initially in the United States and later internationally. The reason behind Harriet Cowell's decision to donate her body to science remains unknown. Previously, the bodies of criminals were typically used for anatomical studies, but her selfless act played a pivotal role in the advancement of anatomy. On November 22, 1963, the 35th President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, was tragically assassinated. The authorities conducted an extensive search for witnesses to the incident. Among those present during the event, 
They scrutinized photographs and noticed a woman wearing a scarf, resembling Russian grandmothers in appearance. Her face was almost always hidden behind a camera, and her eyes were shielded by sunglasses. The fact that she had a camera in her hands raised the possibility that her footage could aid the investigation in identifying the assassin. This mysterious woman became known as Lady Babushka, and her photograph was widely circulated in hopes of obtaining information about her. However, her true identity as a witness to the president's assassination was never conclusively established. In 1970, a woman claiming to be Beverly Oliver came forward to the police confessing that she was the Babushka. She stated that her Yashica Super 8 camera had recorded the moment of the assassination. However, FBI agents promptly confiscated her camera. Yet Beverly's claims had several inconsistencies. First, the model of the camera she mentioned wasn't manufactured in 1963. Second, the woman in the photographs appeared to be around 40 years old, while Beverly was only 17 at the time. So, the true identity of Lady Babushka and the reasons behind her filming the assassination remain a mystery. This photograph captures peculiar writings penned by a woman named Emma Hawk, addressed to her husband. Upon examination, it becomes evident that she repeatedly wrote the same word without any spaces, come to me. This pattern persisted throughout all of her letters. The text on the paper appeared unusual due to Emma's illness. At the age of 30, she experienced a nervous breakdown, leading to hallucinations. Concerned about her well-being, Emma's husband arranged for her to receive treatment in a psychiatric hospital. While she managed to regain her previous state of mind initially, Emma suffered a relapse. Unfortunately, subsequent treatments proved ineffective. She was ultimately diagnosed with schizophrenia and spent numerous years confined within the hospital's walls. During her stay, Emma devoted her free time to writing letters, although she never sent them and never requested to meet with her husband. These letters, authored by Emma Hawk, are preserved within the private collection of psychiatrist Hans Prinzhorn. They serve as an illustrative example of the creative expressions that can emerge from individuals with mental illnesses. Schizophrenia is not an uncommon disorder characterized by hallucinations, delusions, and social dysfunction. Those affected often struggle to recognize their condition and frequently find it challenging to distinguish between reality and hallucination. This photograph captures a truly unique individual, the most famous hermit of the 19th century, known as the Leather Man. This enigmatic man embarked on extensive journeys across the New World, drawing attention due to his distinctive appearance. He dressed in rough leather attire, which he skillfully sewed himself. His complete ensemble included a shirt, pants, jacket, scarf, bag, hat, and boots, all of which weighed approximately 27 kilograms. Despite his intimidating appearance, the Leatherman was entirely harmless. His command of the English language was limited, and he typically responded to questions with monosyllabic answers and expressive gestures. However, he spoke fluent French, and a French prayer book was discovered in his bag, leading people to speculate about his origin, with many assuming he hailed from France. Residents of towns along his regular route noticed that he adhered to a strict routine covering about 600 kilometers annually between the Connecticut and Hudson Rivers. Once he reached a specific point, he would turn around and retrace his steps. Over time, the leather man became a familiar presence, and locals even anticipated his arrival, offering him bread and tea, while men shared chewing tobacco with him. For an astounding 32 years, the Leatherman followed the same path. Then one day, he disappeared and was later discovered deceased in one of the caves. The cause of death was oral cancer. His unusual journey came to an end, and he was interred in the Sparta Cemetery in Ossining, New York, under the name Jules Borglay. In 2011, a decision was made to exhume his remains and transfer them to a new cemetery, but the grave contained only a few coffin nails, and no trace of his remains could be found. Before you is a composite sketch of the most enigmatic maniac of the 20th century. Between 1968 and 1969, an individual known as the Zodiac carried out seven confirmed armed attacks on people, resulting in the tragic deaths of five individuals. Following the second attack, the Zodiac began sending cryptic messages to newspapers, identifying himself as Zodiac. 
At the crime scenes, he left behind a peculiar symbol reminiscent of a Celtic cross. The maniac's letters contained chilling details of the murders he committed and ominous warnings about impending crimes. Alongside these letters, he included cryptographic ciphers, claiming they concealed his personal information. Some of these ciphers have been deciphered, while others remain unsolved mysteries to this day. The first cipher, comprising 408 symbols, was cracked by two school teachers. Contrary to the Zodiac's promises, it did not reveal personal information, but instead delved into his disturbing fascination with killing, suggesting he believed he was amassing slaves for the afterlife. The second cipher, composed of 340 symbols, remained undeciphered until 2020 when three code-breaking experts from the United States finally decoded it. Like the first cipher, it did not disclose any information about the maniac's identity, but rather conveyed his fearlessness of death, as he claimed to have gathered enough slaves for himself. Despite extensive investigations, the true identity of the Zodiac remains a mystery. He was evidently an intelligent yet mentally disturbed individual. The composite sketch was created based on the accounts of surviving victims, but a matching suspect was never apprehended. Numerous individuals have been considered suspects in this high-profile and perplexing case, but the Zodiac continues to elude capture. In the 19th century, steam boiler explosions were distressingly frequent events, and the aftermath of such incidents often presented an unusual spectacle, as captured in this photograph. The first recorded steam boiler explosion dates back to 1813. It occurred when British engineer William Brunton, in his quest to achieve higher speeds for his train, decided to raise the steam pressure in the boiler. This ill-fated decision led to a catastrophic explosion. In the wake of boiler explosions, one of the striking consequences was the ejection of fire tubes from the front of steam engines. These tubes played a crucial role by channeling heat from the furnace, converting water into steam. The scene following such an explosion often took on a surreal appearance, as if the train had fallen victim to an assault by a metallic tentacled creature. This eerie photograph showcases the aftermath of the Tunguska meteorite impact, featuring thousands of fallen and charred trees. On the morning of June 17, 1908, an extraordinary event unfolded in the Krasnoyarsk territory. A fiery ball suddenly appeared in the sky, hurtling rapidly toward Earth. This was followed by a tremendously powerful explosion that resounded as far as a thousand kilometers away. According to some estimates, its force ranged from 10 to 40 megatons in TNT equivalent, akin to the power of an average hydrogen bomb. The consequences of this incident were extensive. A vast forest area spanning over 2,000 square kilometers was flattened. People across the Northern Hemisphere reported witnessing unusual illuminations in the sky and strange silver clouds. At the moment of the explosion, windows in houses within a 200-kilometer radius of the impact site were shattered. Despite the catastrophic scale of this event, it took more than a decade for anyone to embark on an investigation to ascertain its cause. It wasn't until 1921 that the first expedition was dispatched to the meteorite's fall zone in search of debris. After a year of dedicated research, no remnants of the celestial object were recovered. To this day, the mystery surrounding this incident remains unresolved. Over the years, more than 70 different hypotheses have been proposed in an attempt to explain the enigma, including the theory that it might not have been a meteorite at all, but rather a result of experiments conducted by Nikola Tesla. However, none of these hypotheses have been definitively proven. On the morning of October 3, 1955, the Joita yacht embarked on a voyage from the port of Apia in western Samoa, destined for the Tokelau Islands. However, the yacht never reached its intended destination and remained missing for 37 days. It was finally located 1,000 kilometers off its planned course. The Joita had a rich history, having been constructed in the early 1930s and renowned as a luxurious vessel that often hosted parties for Hollywood stars. During World War II, it was requisitioned by the U.S. Navy and served as a patrol vessel. After the war, the yacht changed ownership frequently. In 1952, Professor Catherine Luamala from the University of Hawaii acquired the Joita, 
later gifting it to her friend Thomas Miller. Until 1955, Miller used the yacht for transporting various goods. However, he decided to use it for passenger transport, carrying a substantial cargo load to the Tokelau Islands. He was enticed by the prospect of significant earnings and managed to assemble a full crew with the advance payment received. When the Joita embarked on its journey, it had 25 people on board. Unfortunately, Miller, driven by dreams of profits, had neglected the vessel's maintenance. When the yacht was eventually discovered, it was found to be operating with a severely compromised engine and listing to one side. Notably, none of the 25 passengers, nor the four tons of cargo, were aboard the yacht. The lifeboats were also missing, suggesting that people may have attempted to escape. However, none of the passengers were ever located. Admiring the Amber Room within the Catherine Palace can be an extensive and captivating experience. Every element of this artistic masterpiece invites scrutiny. However, what is currently on display for palace visitors is but a replica, as the original room is considered to be missing. The history of this unparalleled masterpiece traces back to the 18th century, when Prussian King Frederick I commissioned the creation of a grand chamber adorned with panels made from the most exquisite amber and embellished with elegant friezes crafted by German artisans. Peter the Great, during his visits to Prussia, was perpetually enchanted by this marvel. After the Prussian king's passing, his son, Frederick William I, gifted the amber chamber to Peter. Peter I was overjoyed with the long-awaited gift, but regrettably, it slipped from his memory, and the room's contents were stored for 25 years in the chambers of Ludwigsburg in the Summer Garden. It was Peter's daughter Elizabeth who remembered this masterpiece. At her command, the chamber was installed in the Winter Palace and later moved to the Catherine Palace. During World War II, the Nazis, notorious for their looting of art objects, set their sights on the Amber Room. They pilfered this precious masterpiece and transported it to Königsberg Castle, where it was kept until August 1944. Tragically, following a British aviation attack, the castle was reduced to ashes. However, no traces of the Amber Room were discovered amid the ruins. Since then, this extraordinary work of art has remained unseen by anyone. Numerous theories abound regarding the room's mysterious disappearance. Some suggest it may have perished in the flames, while others propose that it was expertly concealed. Some inventions from past centuries not only appeared unusual, but even had a somewhat frightening aspect. The first photograph depicts a girl in a swimming pool who seems to resemble a character from a horror film. This peculiar swimming mask, despite its rather terrifying appearance, was invented in 1928. According to its creators, it served a valuable purpose by protecting swimmers' faces from the harmful effects of ultraviolet rays. The second photograph showcases an invention that is equally eerie and reminiscent of a leather-clad monster. In reality, it's one of the earliest wetsuits dating back to the early 18th century, known as the Old Gentleman. Crafted from cowhide and treated with a mixture of pig fat and resin, this suit was entirely waterproof. Its seams were sewn with waxed thread and filled with resin. Divers would literally enter the suit through an opening at the front, and air was supplied through wooden pipes via a piston pump, with excess air being released through a smaller tube located at the back of the suit. This remarkable invention is now housed in the Finnish Museum of Diving, The following photograph, to put it mildly, presents an unsettling sight, a multitude of human teeth. One might wonder why anyone would gather such a peculiar collection. The story behind this discovery involves workers who were conducting renovations on the second floor of a building dating back to the year 1900 in Valdosta, Georgia. During the renovations, these workers stumbled upon this unusual find, a substantial number of teeth concealed within the walls of the building. Intrigued by their discovery, the workers decided to capture a photograph of it and subsequently shared it with a local newspaper. Following the publication of a brief article featuring the photograph, local historians initiated an investigation. It was uncovered that on the first floor of the same building, there once operated a pharmacy. Meanwhile, on the second floor, a dental office was run by a certain Dr. Clarence Whittington. The pieces of the puzzle appeared to fall into place with this information. However, a lingering question remains. 
Why did this dentist collect teeth from his patients? What's even more perplexing is the fact that similar discoveries of human teeth hidden within walls were made in other buildings in Valdosta and Carrollton. This peculiar practice raises the question of whether dentists of that era had some unconventional method for disposing of extracted patient teeth, or if there's another mysterious reason behind their concealment within building walls. Contained within these photographs is a bearded man with wild, intense eyes, Grigory Rasputin. He stands as one of the most enigmatic figures in Russian history. Rasputin gained widespread recognition after earning the trust of the Romanov royal family. Prior to meeting the emperor, he presented himself as a holy man endowed with the ability to heal and foretell the future. Despite his rather unappealing appearance, Rasputin enjoyed popularity among affluent women, who perhaps believed in his supernatural powers. Over time, word of the healer reached the ears of the royal family. Nicholas II's only son, Alexei, suffered from hemophilia, and none of the doctors or faith healers seemed to offer any relief. It was then that the emperor's wife, Alexandra, decided to invite Rasputin. Surprisingly, the boy's condition genuinely improved in Rasputin's presence. Historians remain baffled by how this self-proclaimed healer managed to produce such a positive effect, with some speculating that he employed hypnosis. Rasputin also purportedly had the ability to predict the future. However, amidst the tales surrounding Rasputin, one prediction turned out to be chillingly accurate. The prediction of his own death and the demise of the entire royal family. In a letter to the emperor, he foretold that he would not live to see January, and that if Nicholas II was involved in his demise, the entire royal family would face death at the hands of the people. On the night of December 29, 1916, a group of nobles, including the emperor's cousin, assassinated Rasputin. Just a little over a year and a half later in July 1918, Nicholas II, along with his wife Alexandra and their five children, met a tragic end when they were shot. Today, it's nearly impossible for modern society to fathom life without electricity. The absence of electricity would usher in a state of utter chaos, and it's difficult to imagine a world without this fundamental resource. Yet it's intriguing to reflect on the fact that, toward the end of the 19th century, the introduction of electricity was met with resistance in various cities worldwide. In the streets of some cities, peculiar structures connected by wires began to appear. These early power lines marked the inception of a transformative technological era. Curiously, not everyone embraced this new technology with open arms. In fact, there were skeptics who harbored reservations about the adoption of electricity. This poster, created in 1900, stands as a testament to the opposition against electrification. Legend has it that the poster's narrative was inspired by a real incident in 1889. During that year, a lineman named John Fix was diligently working on a Manhattan street when an unforeseen accident occurred. In a tragic turn of events, Fix was fatally electrocuted, a harrowing incident witnessed by onlookers. Undoubtedly, the event struck fear into the hearts of those who were beginning to grapple with the idea of this convenient yet seemingly perilous innovation. However, as time progressed, skeptics became fewer in number and society came to realize the indispensable role electricity plays in our daily lives, making it a cornerstone of modern civilization. The man in the iron mask remains one of the most enduring enigmas of Louis XIV's reign. His story begins in 1669 when he was apprehended and consigned to captivity, enduring an astonishing 34 years of imprisonment. Louis XIV, determined to keep the prisoner's identity concealed from the world, issued stringent orders that no one should ever set eyes on him. For this reason, the captive was placed under the unwavering guard of the vigilant prison warden, Bernardo Verne de Samar, who ensured that his face remained hidden behind an iron mask. The identity of this mysterious individual and the reasons for his arrest have remained shrouded in secrecy. In the annals of history, he is known merely as Eustache Dauger, a name attributed to him when the Minister of War, the Marquis de Louvois, dispatched a letter to St. Mars, who was then the custodian of the remote Pignerol prison. The missive contained a grave warning about the arrival of an exceedingly dangerous prisoner. 
However, some historians have questioned the authenticity of this name, as it appeared to be written in a different handwriting than that of Louvois. The enigmatic captive's odyssey through various prisons paralleled St. Mars's ascent through the ranks, culminating in his appointment as the warden of increasingly formidable penitentiaries. Ultimately, the man in the Iron Mask was transferred to the infamous Bastille. Despite his prolonged confinement, he was afforded relatively humane treatment due to his serene disposition. However, the penalty for removing the mask would have been immediate execution. On November 19, 1703, the man in the Iron Mask succumbed to the inexorable passage of time. In a final act of secrecy, all his personal effects were incinerated along with his remains. Speculation about his true identity has abounded over the centuries, with some historians positing that he might have been a sibling of Louis XIV, potentially even his twin. However, for most people, the man in the Iron Mask exists only as a character brought to life by Alexandre Dumas in his compelling novel, The Vicomte of Bragelonne. A decade later, Dumas further immortalized this enigmatic figure with a dedicated play titled The Prisoner of the Bastille. This photograph may come across as shocking to modern observers, but it would hardly raise an eyebrow among Egyptians of the last century. The image captures a vendor of mummies in a moment of idle anticipation. At the outset of the 20th century, the world was introduced to the enigmatic treasures of ancient Egypt. Tomb raiders and excavators began selling anything they could unearth, ranging from architectural relics to mummified human remains. People of wealth and means from across the globe were willing to pay exorbitant sums to possess a fragment of Egyptian civilization for their personal collections. This voracious demand led to the establishment of a clandestine market where tomb raiders and middlemen offered a wide array of tomb artifacts. Mummies, once revered as remnants of a noble past, faced a disconcerting fate. They were ground into powders purported to have medicinal properties and sold in numerous pharmacies. Additionally, they were employed as decorative elements in the opulent homes of affluent collectors. Tragically, this fervor for Egyptian antiquities often deprived archaeologists of the opportunity to conduct thorough studies and preserve invaluable historical artifacts. Animated characters brought to life by the Walt Disney Company are household names, and Mickey Mouse stands as their most iconic creation. Mickey's birth date is widely acknowledged as November 18, 1928, the day of the first screening of the cartoon Steamboat Willie. However, Mickey had already made an appearance in the cartoon Plane Crazy six months earlier. Many children eagerly anticipated their initial encounter with Mickey Mouse on the big screen. They prepared for this event by donning mouse masks, as captured in this photograph. It's worth noting that the children in these masks appear rather eerie in the monochromatic snapshot, making this image reminiscent of a poster for a memorable horror movie. Thank you for sharing these intriguing stories and photographs. If you found this information interesting, don't forget to rate this content, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell icon to stay updated with more captivating stories.